so alveolar bone part 2 in this session we will be dealing about cells and matrix component of alveolar bone so we have basically two types of cell that is osteogenic and osteoclastic osteogenic as the name suggests it is creating cells and osteoclastic it is destroying cells osteogenic cells are osteoblasts osteocyte bone lining cells and bone progenitor cell whereas the osteoclastic basically just the osteoclasts and in matrix component we have inorganic and organic in inorganic we have calcium hydroxy apatite crystals in organic we have collagen matrix and non collagenous proteins in non collagenous proteins we have osteocalcin osteopontin and bone xyloprotein osteonectin proteoglycans etc so the commonly asked questions are osteoclast osteoblast so we'll start with osteoblast so during embryonic development the intramembrane is bone of the maxilla and mandible initially forms from osteoblast arising from condensing mesenchyme in the facial region so it is a most active secretory cells in bone so it has basophilic uh, cuboidal elongated cells which is rich in synthetic and secretory organelles such as rough endoplasmic reticulum golgi apparatus granules microtubules and it produces basically type 1 collagen and non cancellous bone proteins like xyloprotein osteopontin osteonectin and also growth factors also it will produce which express and release alkaline phosphatase so alkaline phosphatase is very much important in bone formation alkaline phosphatase So alkaline phosphatase activity has been recognized as a reliable indicator of osteoblast function. And osteocytes. So I'll just give you a cycle of formation. This is osteoprogenitor cell, which is a very primitive one. Then osteoblast, later osteocyte, and finally osteoclast. So these three are osteogenic cell but this is osteoclastic cell so osteocyte is nothing but uh, cells which is entrapped like uh, osteoblast which is entrapped within bone are known as osteocytes okay so the entrapped osteoblast so osteoblast we learned so the entrapped osteoblast is known as osteocyte so if this osteoblast is entrapped within bone that is osteocyte which will be having canaliculi and uh, they occupy in uh, spaces known as lacunae in bone and are uh, defined as cell surrounded by bone matrix now we have bone lining cells bone lining cells uh, when bone surface are neither in the formative nor in the resorptive phase, the surface is completely lined by a layer of flattened cell which is known as bone lining cell, which is regarded as post-proliferative osteoblast. So, so these bone line, lining cells are present when osteoblast and osteoclast activities are not there on the bone surface. Now the osteoprogenitor cell these are actually cells which produces osteoblast so they are fibroblast like cells with an elongated nucleus and few organelles whereas osteoclast we have learned this in detail uh, about osteoclast in our previous sessions so osteoclast originate from hematopoietic tissue fusion of mononuclear cells to form a multinucleated giant cell this is a multinucleated giant cell I told you about this is a ruffled border and there will be a clear zone 
so it is very large it can have 5 to 50 uh, nuclei which is active on less than 1 percentage of bond surface it lie in house ships lacunae acidophilic cytoplasm and there will be ruffled border okay so there will be ruffled border phasing the bond because hydrolytic enzymes are secreted and it has increased surface area so wherever this resorption happens the border will be in this shape ruffle border and multinuclear giant cell will be there and there will be a clear zone apart from it so that is osteoclast osteoclast is a commonly as short note osteoclast and osteoblast can be osteocyte and osteoprogenitor cell also can be a short note so osteoclast at the periphery of ruffle border the plasma membrane is smooth and closely opposed to bone surface and the adjacent cytoplasm is devoid of cell organelles which is uh, rich in actin and tallin proteins associated with cell addition this region is known as clear zone okay so this is a ruffle border and this is a clear zone so clear zone is the adjacent cytoplasm which is not having any cell organelles so this clear zone creates an isolated micro environment in which resorption can take place so clear zone is also important so severe osteoclast excavating a large area of bone which is the leading edge of resorption is termed as cutting cone okay and released cytokines stimulate stem cells to differentiate into osteoblast so these osteoblasts secrete osteoid which is known as filling cone so cutting cone and filling cones are there cutting cone wherever this resorption happens is cutting cone and when the deposition happens that is filling cone so always bone formation is a continuous process resorption and deposition uh, will occur uh, in a bone that's how it is remodeled throughout the life so cutting cone is a osteoclastic activity creating a edge is resorbed and the other side when cytokines are released and there will be osteoid deposition which is known as filling cone so cutting cone and filling cone cutting cone filling cone so cutting cone there will be osteoclast activity and filling cone there will be osteoblast activity so that's about uh, osteoclast and osteoblast so two more things we need to learn is reversal line and resting line so these are important what is reversal line and what is resting line so this all can be asked as short note so reversal line or also known as cementing line so reversal line or cementing line which is a site of change from bone resorption to bone deposition is represented by a scalloped outline which is rich in protein and osteopontin so reversal line you can say it is corresponding with filling cone where the osteoblast uh, deposit the new bone osteoid so this is known as reversal line or cementing line that is the site of change from bone resorption to bone deposition so before it was bone resorbed area so new bones will be added so bone resorbed area will be like this ruffled border so when there is bone deposition it will be shallow instead of ruffled border so that is known as reversal line or cementing line so the change of bone resorption to bone deposition now what is resting line resting line is rhythmic deposition of bone with periods of relative inactivity seen as parallel vertical lines so there will be parallel vertical lines 
in bones when we take ground section of bone we can see parallel vertical lines so there will be rhythmic deposition of bone it will be added layer by layer but in between there will be a relative inactive phase which is seen as vertical parallel line that is known as resting line and reversal line is when deposition and uh, resorption uh, deposition happens the previously resorbed area gives a scalloped area which is known as reversal or cementing line so we have few age changes in bone just like uh, any heart tissue we have seen that in uh, cementum the age changes uh, and also we have seen in pdl also so any uh, tissue any living tissue will uh, go through the age changes so in bones it is uh, similar to like what is occurring in the skeletal system there will be osteoporosis with aging there will be decreased vascularity reduction in metabolic rate and healing capacity so bone resorption may be increased and more irregular periodontal surface will be seen and few uh, variations in normal bone are fenestration uh, dissens exostosis buttressing bone formation or it is also known as slipping so fenestration and dissens are removal of bone that is a uh, facial surface is more involved fenestration is isolated loss of bone and dissens is a complete loss of facial bone so it is anterior tooth are more involved and frequently bilateral sometimes due to malposition and root prominence or labial protrusion so etiology could be excessive occlusal force so this fenestration and dissens could be a short note so next thing is exostosis exostosis are outgrowth of bone of varied size and shape they can occur as small nodules large nodules uh, maybe sharp ridge or spike like projection or any combination of the above that is nodule small or large ridges or spike like projections and buttressing bone formation or lipping is nothing but uh, sometimes what happens is bone formation occurs in an attempt to buttress bony trabeculae which is weakened by resorption okay so when it occurs within the jaw which is termed as central buttressing bone formation and when it is on the external surface which is known as peripheral buttressing bone formation so this peripheral buttressing bone formation will cause bulging of the bone contour which is known as slipping okay so that is attempt to buttress a bony trabeculae which is weakened by resorption so that is bone buttressing so that is all about uh, normal variations and we have bone deformities horizontal and vertical so vertical will be an angular bone loss horizontal will be uh, evenly distributed mesio uh, mesio distal uh, direction so we are not going much into those things so idea was to give a proper introduction about alveolar bone the types of alveolar bone its formation its composition and little bit about its variation bone deformities and age changes so we finished our periodontium that is gingiva periodontal ligament or the soft tissues and cementum and alveolar bone or the hard tissues so periodontium is nothing but which supports and surrounds the tooth so it gingiva periodontal ligament cementum alveolar bone are supporting structures of tooth so we have uh, many more topics coming up uh, we have to finish enamel dentin and pulp so i'll come up with these topics in my next sessions thank you